restaurant or you're at somebody's house playing cards. And I'm sure we all know folks that are that don't think like we do, who aren't as accepting. Say something. Amen. You know what it is? Amen. Say something. Say, hey, look, that's not right. We should be treating everybody equal. Everybody should have the same chance to go and be an NBA player. Everybody have the same chance to have a family, live in a home. We should all have the same chance. So if you hear somebody, if you're at a restaurant and you hear somebody say, you know, some negative comment, some racist clamor, say something. Have the courage to say something. And it won't take long if we all do that. But this room will not be just you folks. It'll be twice as many next year. It'll be three times as many after that. Before long, Clarence is going to have to go have an after gymnasium because we won't be able to have as many, uh, we won't have as many seats as we have people. And that's what I think the goal is. And God bless Clarence. Um, if he's not a savior of God, I don't never know I've ever met one. He's an incredible human being. Um, so I'll, I'll give you one more uh, quote now as I'm going to give Clarence a little gift that I think represents. It's something I picked up at the Civil Rights Museum. And it's called Vision. And I'm going to put my glasses on. It says, genuine leaders have the ability to articulate, initiate, and follow through on their vision. And I would say after 34 years of doing this, that Clarence is the epitome of somebody who follows through on their vision. So Clarence, I want to give you this picture. And you know, Clarence always says, it's not about him. It's not about him. He's not doing this for accolades or gifts or anything like that. And he's not. You know that. You know he's as genuine as they come. But he's well deserving of such, of such a, a memento. I think the players, and I've got one more thing for you. I was going to give it to you where, but I saw you were styling in your suit today. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a shirt from the Moraine Hotel and the National Civil Rights Museum. And I, I think you'd look good sporting that around in our games. In conclusion, it's, it's all about God and love. And if you have love in your hearts, and you can share that love with others and help explain to them why you feel that way and why you're not a racist. And why anybody is in today's age, I don't understand how you can have so much hate in your, in your body. You know, whether they be Jewish, whether they be Asian, whether they be whatever race and creed, they were all created in God's image. We're all created in God's image. We're all different, you know, some of us are tall, some of us are short, some of us are small, some of us are large, some of us are black, some of us are white, some of us are Asian, some of us may be Jewish. But does it matter? Does it really matter at the end of the day? You know, there's too much hate. The Republicans hate the Democrats, and the Democrats hate the Republicans, and on and on and on and on and on. And last night when I was going through my notes and writing a few things, a few other things, I turned on the news. What a mistake. What a mistake. If you ever, you know, I, I, and I threw my hands up again and said, well, I can't even begin to comprehend how to, how to start. But it's gonna, it has to start with us, has to start with your vote. We have to get prayer back in schools. We have to teach about God to all our children. They can't learn from people like my father. They can't learn from some of these other people that live in the area, that live in Martinsville, that live wherever. We have got to break the cycle. And I was able to break that cycle. My children have not a racist bone in their body. And their children will not. But that's how it works. We have to start one generation at a time. One generation at a time. And it has to start at home. And if they're not going to do it at home, then we have to force it to be done at school so that people have love in their heart. So thank you, Clarence. Thanks for having me.
get over to Medora, check out a game. I guarantee you, you will have the best time of your life. We have entertainment. We have just, it's, it's, it's a, a three-ring circus going on around a really good basketball game. So lots of chances to win. Our first year we had a putting contest for $50,000. Um, so we do all kinds of fun stuff. And I'll leave you with this. The president of the State Bank of Medora told me, he said, I've had season tickets to Indiana University for 40 years. He said, I would much rather come to a Timber Jacks game than go to an Indiana game. He said that. Well, of course, <laughs> we know how that's been lately. But he said... He said, even in the good days, he said, this is so much fun and so much, it's just seeing a college game, a college level players, pro level players on a high school court is just something that is really, really cool. So please come to Menorah, come in here, land and sing the national anthem. We'll get schedules out to you. There'll be some stuff in the paper, but I'm serious as, as can be. We want you to come over. Um, thank you. <laughs> I think with that, I'm going to bring you up here to sing another song, aren't you? Come on up. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. God bless. Somebody tell. 